So I decided I wanted to build a reef tank. It's my first reef tank, my first fish tank actually. So I started getting some of the supplies to do it. I got a 30 gallon tank and I got 20 pounds of Pukani dry rock from bulk reef supply. I also picked up some GFO and activated carbon and some other chemicals to get started. So the first step is to start carrying this dry rock to remove some of the dead organic material from the outside and to remove some of the phosphates. I'm keeping track of everything I'm buying in a spreadsheet which I'll post in the description so you guys can check out exactly what I'm buying and how much it costs. Okay so I got five gallons of water in there with the rock. Um, it's just regular hose water. I don't really see the point of using deionized water since there's so much stuff on the rock and I'm gonna add a lot of acid to it. Um, so I got two quarts of concentrated hydrochloric acid and we're gonna add it to the rock and give it a little bit of time to start digesting the outsides. A lot of foam coming off that. Give it a shake. And we'll give it some time, probably about half an hour. I think this foam might about might overflow here. Okay, so it's been a half hour and the rock is mostly not reacting anymore. I turned it about halfway through and so now I'm going to dump the liquid which is mostly calcium chloride and a bunch of organic crap and then I'll wash it a few times with water uh, but I'm not too concerned about washing it super thoroughly because any free hydrochloric acid should react with the calcium chloride in the rock or the calcium carbonate in the rock and uh, be neutralized so I'm just gonna go pour this gunk down the sink okay so I have the rock all washed off I washed it about four times at which point the water was relatively clear. The rock still has some kind of slimy areas on it. Um, I forgot to mention this is 20 pounds of dry rock, uh, which is less than the pound per gallon recommendation, but I'm hoping because this rock has a fairly low density that I'll be able to get away with that. So the next step is I'm going to fill this with about 10 gallons of water and treat it with this phosphate remover which contains lanthanum chloride which should precipitate any of the phosphates that are leaching out of this rock and then I'll be able to wash them away. Um, again I'm gonna do that in just tap water. So I wanted to uh, give a bit of a visual demonstration to show how the phosphate remover is actually gonna be removing the phosphate. So I have some navel jelly here which is pretty much just phosphoric acid and uh, some gelling agents. So I'm gonna dissolve this in some water here. So there's a little bit of cloudiness, but the solution is basically clear. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of the lanthanum chloride phosphate remover that I'm using on the reef rocks. You can see it's kind of turning a little bit milky and that's because the phosphates are actually being precipitated out um, as a solid, as a really fine powder. And so as the phosphates leach from the rock, they'll be precipitated and then more phosphates will leach out, be precipitated, and when we do the water changes, uh, ideally those solid particulate will be left behind and thrown away and by that mechanism we can get rid of the phosphate that's being stored in the rock. There's two reasons we want to keep the phosphate in the tank low. The first is that if there's too much phosphate in the tank then opportunistic algae will grow and we don't want that to happen in the tank. And the second reason is too much phosphate will inhibit calcification of the coral. So coral needs to um, use calcium in its skeleton and if there's too much phosphate in the water it won't be able to do that efficiently. I went ahead and cleaned up the tank with uh, some water and some hydrochloric acid and I just scrubbed it and rinsed it really well and um, 
it looks really good actually there's very little staining so I'm gonna paint the back of the tank black because it's gonna be up against a wall and um, it's gonna look better with a black background so and I'm probably gonna paint the trim because it's kind of like this uh, faux wood so it's the paint I got um, so yeah I'm just gonna tape it up and paint the back I painted the back of the tank I put on three coats went pretty smoothly I'm pretty happy with the result I'm at the ocean I'm gonna gather some seawater because I didn't buy any reef salt this is the seawater I picked up from the beach it's a little bit cloudy because there's some sand that hasn't settled out I pulled out these uh, sand crabs that hitched a ride and I tested the uh, nitrates and the phosphates both were totally zero this is the uh, nitrate test. It turns pink when there's nitrates, but it's pretty much completely clear. Getting the seawater from the beach was even more of a hassle than I thought it was going to be. So I'm definitely going to buy some reef salt and just mix it up with deionized water in the future. But hopefully there are some beneficial bacteria in the seawater that I gathered today, along with all the plankton, viruses, all sorts of bacteria. Hopefully those will start to colonize the rock. It's been a week since I did the acid wash, and every 24 hours since I did the acid wash, I did 100% water change and dosed with the phosphate remover every time. Uh, now I have the seawater in with the rocks. Both power heads, both uh, 450 gallons per hour each, and a 150 watt uh, heater set to 79 degrees no phosphate remover in here and I'm going to uh, let it run for a few days and see what happens with the phosphates what happens with the nitrates and hopefully get an idea of how much more work needs to be done after a little over a week in the seawater the phosphate levels got pretty high the ammonia got up to four parts per million to deal with the phosphate I added about 20 to 30 mils of the phosphate remover which was a much higher dose than I had been using previously and I just let it sit in that for another seven to ten days and after that I moved it to the tank. This is my first attempt at aquascaping the tank so I just laid down the uh, rocks on the glass making sure nothing is leaning up against the side tried to leave a little space in the middle for some negative space I'm probably gonna play around with this a little bit Next step is to lay down the live sand. I had the sand and leveled it out. This was 20 pounds of sand, and it's about one inch thick, which is pretty good. You can see I just pushed it around a little bit. This is the product I'm using. Carob C, 20 pounds. And it came with this uh, clarifier. So I'm gonna add that to the water. Put the filter on, put the power heads on, put the heater in. I added the bio clarifier and I added 5 mils of the Microbacter 7. The water level is low because I didn't have enough so tomorrow I'm gonna get some DI water, mix up some salt solution and fill this tank up all the way. It's only been about an hour and a half and the tank is 90% clear. Pretty good. briefly talk about the filtration that I'm using. This is an AquaClear 50 hang on back filter. It came with a filter pad, activated carbon, and um, this bio pellet media, which you can see on the top. So the activated carbon will remove organic compounds um, released by fish and decaying matter that would um, make the water less clear. Um, and the media here is like synthetic live rock. It basically has a high surface area and provides a place for beneficial bacteria to live that are going to um, convert the ammonia into nitrites and nitrates and eventually into nitrogen gas. I also added some granular ferric oxide, which I got bulk from BRS. I added seven and a half tablespoons, uh, which is the recommended dosing. So what it looks like. 
Um, it's a pretty fine powder, so to load it into the filter, I put that um, GFO in some pantyhose and just sealed it with zip ties and stuck it um, on top of the activated carbon. And I tested the, um, the phosphates and they were at zero, so it looks like they're doing a pretty good job. I rearranged the rocks a little bit um, to make a little bit of a cave here. And so now the tank is in the process of cycling. Cycling refers to the nitrogen cycle that occurs in the tank, which is carried out by various species of bacteria. The reason it's important is because it converts toxic ammonia to nitrate or nitrogen gas, which are considerably less toxic. The ammonia comes from fish waste, and it also comes from decaying organic matter, so any leftover food that decays will turn into ammonia first. The nitrogen cycle is carried out by many species of bacteria, and to introduce these bacteria I used a product called Microbacter 7, which is a bacterial blend, and I used the recommended dosing for 25 days, just because that's how long my bottle lasted. Cycling really means establishing the bacteria and waiting until they convert the ammonia to nitrogen. So the first step is you have to provide them a source of ammonia. There's a couple ways to do this. Some people will add just a single fish. Some people will just add bits of fish food and the bacteria will naturally break it down into ammonia. Alternatively, there's fishless cycling where you use pure ammonia or ammonium chloride. I had originally planned to use ammonium chloride to do a fishless cycle. In my case, I didn't actually add any because the dead organisms that were still on the rock, the algae, the little sponges that I couldn't scrape off, they decayed enough that they provided ammonia to get the bacteria started. Here's an image I took of the Microbacter 7 solution at 400x. You can see there's some green creatures in there. I think they might be photosynthetic, but I'm not sure what they are because the Nitrobacter or the Nitrosomonas should not be photosynthetic, so I don't know if that's a contamination or a different bacteria. The very small dots are Nitrosomonas. The rest of it, it's really hard to tell because the bacteria are so small. I checked the nitrogen levels every couple of days. After 22 days, the ammonia level was undetectable, the nitrite was really low, and the nitrate was down to two parts per million, down from 15. So at that point, the tank had finished cycling and it's safe to put fish and coral in the tank.